Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our MQ Trader webinar on the topic of MACD divergence, which is a powerful indicator for profitable sharing. So I'm Casey, for your host for today's event, a team of MQ Trader. So can I have a quick mic check? Can you type one in the chat box if you can hear me clearly? So for all of our audience, remember to log into your MQ Trader account or sign up for one so that you can use the chat box to chat with us and interact with us. Okay, so yeah, I saw someone type one already, clear. Okay, good. Thank you for your response. I believe most of other people will be clear as well. So welcome once again to our MQ Trader webinar. And remember to log into your MQ ID so that you can chat with us in the chat box. So let me start with a brief intro to MQ Trader. MQ Trader stands for Malaysia Quantitative Trader Group, which is what we use, we use MQ quantitative methods to do our analysis and we develop the MQ Trader Stock Analysis tool. We bring what normally only available to large in financial institutions to our MQ members. We seek to empower them to make quicker decisions and with greater confidence. So other than the stock analysis tool, MQ Trader also provides other services, including all you can see on the screen. You can also accumulate MQ points whenever you trade in the account you open with our selected advertiser. You can also join our MQ affiliate program. You can also use our MQ Dummy web page, which is the platform you're using now for the webinar. And also you can use our MQ event to refer to all the financial events are coming up. So you can scan the QR code on the screen or screenshot it so that you can save all the links and you can refer later on. Now we are also having these benefits, additional account rewards for the account opening rewards for all who open an account with our selected advertiser, including free account opening fees, free premium t-shirt after you perform five trades in your new account, free share transfer to your new account, and also free i3 investor portfolio integration. Again, you can scan the QR code 
uh, of the respective advertiser to submit your basic details if you are interested to open a trading account with either one of them. So on the screen, we have M Equities LYH team and also TA Securities, Jesse Xiao. So feel free to send in your contact details to either one of them. Currently, MQ Trader is also having this referral campaign in 2023 where you can get bonus of 1,000 MQ coins for each successful referrals under the MQ Affiliate Program. This is equivalent to a 10 ringgit per referral. It is a bonus on top of your usual MQ Affiliate recurring rewards as well. The campaign is ending by 30th of June, so do sign up now and start referring if you are our current MQ Affiliate. And for our current MQ members, you can also get a bonus of 300 MQ points as a check in rewards. You just need to screenshot any part of this webinar. Remember the screenshot in this webinar only. Okay, and then you just submit it in the post webinar quiz that will be sent to your email after this. So remember, you need to register to get all this information of post webinar updates. So you can use this QR code here to register as well. I'll post here a few seconds for everyone to take your screenshot in case you forgot. And if you want to register, do register now so that you can get our post webinar updates, including the quiz and also our recordings as well. Now, today's webinar is sponsored by VC Plus. VC Plus is a global online trading platform. So you can trade global stock index options, foreign exchange options, commodity options, and etc. They support various payment methods. You can also register with, they are also registered with authorities around the world. With just one account, you can access two platforms. Registration is free, account opening is free, so, and it's totally online. So you can use the QR code on the screen to register or sign up now. Here's a showcase on their trading platform and their chart itself. On the chart, you can have the signals, which is circled on the screen. And also you can backtest the accuracy of each signals as well. They're also running the 100 USD welcome campaign now. By opening a trading account and deposit at least 500 USD, you can get a 100 USD as a welcome credit. Of course, terms and conditions apply. The campaign ends in 30th of June. So if you're interested, do sign up now, open a trading account now with them using the QR code on the screen. Okay, what's more excited is they are actually having a trading competition starting from tomorrow until the end of June, which is 30th of June. The prizes includes 250 USD all the way up to 1,000 USD dollars, okay? So if you're interested, remember to sign up for a VC Plus trading account so they can and get it verified so they can get ready for the trading contest. From what I know, the contest will be done using a virtual account. So you don't need to worry about losing any capital during the contest itself. You just sign up now and then test out or challenge your own strategy using their virtual account. So for more terms and conditions, you can PM them or their support team to know more. You can also join the VC Plus group chat in an MQ chat system to get their daily market updates for free. You just scan a QR code on the screen and ask you PM them at me so that they can add you to the respective group as well. We, are, we will be having a Q&A session after Kayong's sharing. So after the Q&A, we will also have a mysterious gift session. So we will be giving out gifts worth up to 249 ringgit. Make sure you stay till the end so that you can grab a chance to win the gifts. And about our speaker today, Mr. Kayong, he started trading with just a 500 USD when he was 21 years old. And he managed to turn it into 13,000 USD within two years. And with this success, he was featured on the Singapore CNA Money Mind Young Investors when he, when he was 23 years old. So along the way, he got a lot of awards in Malaysia and in Asia as well. And he's currently a market analyst on various platforms and also the head coach of eSmart Academy. Today, he will be sharing with us on MACD, which is one of the indicator and strategy. He will, he will help us to understand the divergence in this indicator, in this strategy, and also how to use them to trade. So after all this introduction, can I check if you're ready for Kayong's sharing? Can you type ready in the chat box to let me know if you're ready? Just to make sure you are still on 
par with us. XM Traders, you are always the first one. Thank you for your support. Eh? Yes. And Victor, Kilogram, Vion, Chia Yu. Okay, sure. So I think all of you are ready now. Uh, without further ado, let me invite Ka Yong to share with us now. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so um, thanks again for having me today to share with you um, this particular indicator called MACD, right? Uh, in full, it's actually called Moving Average Convergence and Divergence. Uh, it's one of actually the most, I would say, uh, popular, one of the top popular indicator that a lot of traders, uh, whether you're doing on FX market, stock market, indices uh, i think this is definitely one of the most common and popular indicator that traders use okay so uh today's kind of sharing will be sharing with you and give you an introduction about what this particular indicator is uh you know if you're very very new to it um i'll share with you some of the common methods of which traders actually can use this indicator to help them analyze the market as well as identify certain trading signals um, and then I also cover it up with a divergent strategy over here. Okay. So it's more of like a reversal kind of like entry technique. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about, um, in today's session over here. Um, I think just now, you know, um, there's a quick introduction about myself. I think, you know, not the focus today is not me. So, uh, I thought, you know, just very quickly, uh, to share with you a bit in terms of when I got started and, um, you know, where am I right now? Um, so I started in trading, uh, in 2012 and since then, you know, I've been in this industry, um, doing trading, doing investing, um, doing quite a bit of sharings and I managed to turn full time doing this in 2015. And since then, you know, um, I've also been quite privileged to given a lot of opportunities to share in different platforms. Right. And this is something that I truly enjoy. Right. So I always say that, um, I'm still basically, you know, I think all of us as a traders are basically still learning from the market. So I'm not here to really, you know, kind of like tell you exactly everything hundred percent, um, in terms of like what the market is going to do. I think no traders would know hundred percent certainty. Uh, but what I can help, right. Is to really share with you my point of view, my experience, um, what I've actually learned from market. And I really enjoy doing this. Okay. Now, um, if you guys are quite active on social media, I just want to highlight on this as well. Um, I do have an account on Facebook as well as Instagram. Uh, and my URL is basically just my full name. Okay. So there's no dot, there's no hyphen, there's no underscore. Um, oh, okay. I see here Ganesh says can't hear. Um, just very quick check. Is the audio okay? Yeah, I think it's okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, right. so that's probably his side. Yeah. 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 So I was on here, um, sharing about social media and I want to bring this up because, um, even to today, there's a lot of, a uh, fake accounts, you know, and I just thought it's important to let you guys know in case any of those accounts actually reach out to you. Uh, I wouldn't want you to fall victims to, to those. Okay. So, um, yeah. So. If there's any, you know, accounts that use my profile, my, my photo, okay. To reach out to you and ask you, you know, how's your trading, etc. Uh, just be very, very careful. Okay. Because usually I don't do that. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's a quick one. And just, like I mentioned, right. So today's, um, focus will be on like, what is MACD? Okay. How can you use it to actually analyze the market? How can you use it to help you in your trading? Um, and then of course, we also talk about the divergence technique, right? So divergence over here is one of the, I would say powerful way to analyze the market in a way, even if you don't trade a reversal strategy, okay. Um, using the divergence concept will at least help to prevent you from getting involved in, let's say not an ideal trade. Okay. So we use divergence primarily for a reversal entry. But even if today you are not a reversal trader, okay, you can still use the divergence concept to protect you from getting in at not an optimum time. 
Okay, so you can actually look at it from two perspectives. Okay, so divergence to me is one of the very powerful um kind of method to 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 all traders, right? Whether you're reversal or not. Okay, so let's get started by understanding what is MACD. Okay, um, you know, you might heard of this term a lot. Okay, but in terms of the full name, you know, maybe you're not aware. Uh, it basically stands for moving average convergence and divergence. So as the name suggests itself, um, MACD basically studies, you know, the various forms of moving average and they're basically using a formula to calculate, you know, whether the averages are in alignment or the averages are in a divergence, right? That's why the name MACD. So MACD over here, um, there are a couple of components within it, okay? And of course, we'll be, we'll be sharing with you all those things as well. Uh, but one of the most effective way of using MACD is to identify the trend of direction as well as the strength and momentum of the direction of the trend. Okay. So whenever you use a set of indicators, um, you will first need to, of course, understand, you know, what's the strength of this indicator? What is the primary usage of it? Okay. So as I mentioned over here, MACD is to identify trend, is to identify momentum. Okay. Um, like, Compare it to, let's say, another indicator like Bollinger Band, right? Or in short, we call it BB. Okay, so that particular indicator kind of help us to identify um, the momentum, whether is it in a range, is it in a squeeze, or there's an expansion. So these two indicators, there's a slight difference, right? So every time you use an indicator, it's important to first understand what's the primary usage of it, okay? Um, because there are some indicators that are quite similar, okay? For example, if you use MACD, and then at the same time, you're quite familiar with another one called RSI. Okay, it's, it stands for Relative Strength Index. Um, both of these indicators can measure the strength and momentum of the move. Okay, so if you put these two together on the same chart, it may often you know duplicate and kind of like increase the confusion and the complexity of your charts, right? Which is not necessary. Okay. So every time you study indicator, uh, I always highlight it's important to first know what's the primary usage of it, okay? And that's what we're covering right now in terms of MACD, okay? Now, if you actually put up this indicator onto your charts, uh, there are generally three settings for MACD, okay? And I'm someone who kind of like suggests, okay? Um, there's no need for you to go and perfect or, you know, try to backtest it to find the best kind of settings. Uh, I always say just use the standard defaults, okay? Um, usually it's good enough, okay? But of course, you can customize if you want to, okay? So there are three settings for MACD. You have the fast moving average, you have the slow moving average, okay? And then you have what we call the um, signal line, right? Which is a formula to calculate the difference between the fast and slow, and then they'll just basically plot it out in the indicator for you. Okay, so usual setting for MACD, we have the 12, which is the fast moving average. Then we have the 26 period, which is the slow moving average. And then the difference between these two, okay, um, usually the setting is nine, right? Which basically we take like the back, the, the, the back nine data to calculate, okay, the difference. And then we plot line, okay? So for me, okay, I would suggest if you're fairly new to all this indicator, just leave it as default, right? So just leave it as 12, 26, and 9. Okay? So of course, what does this period mean? Okay, if you're very, very new to the terminology of some of this indicator, period basically means how many data points in the past do you want to take in to calculate it, okay? Now, if today you're looking at a daily chart, okay, so what it means is every candle would be considered as one day. Okay, so if you're on a daily chart, a 12 period kind of indicator, it means that we're taking the previous 12 days, right? Because we're taking 12 data points and each data point is one day. Now, if you're on an hourly chart, okay? So 12 period is not 12 days, but if you're on the hourly chart, 12 period basically means you take the, his, the past 12 um, candle, past 12 data points, uh, which means that that is actually 12 hour um, kind of data. Okay, so that's basically what it means, okay? So, um, again, you need to understand a little bit of all this basics so they can appreciate what this indicator really is. Now, then we also have what we call the MACD line, okay? So just now we have the fast moving average, the slow moving average, and then we have the difference between it, which is the signal line. 
And then we also have the MACD line, right? So the MACD line is basically the difference between the fast and the slow, okay? So the signal line, sorry, the signal line itself is the EMA of the MACD line. Okay, so I backtrack a bit, okay? Um, my mistake on this, yeah? So this one here, the MACD, and later I'll show you the indicator. There are two lines, right? Um, blue and orange. So the MACD line here is basically the difference of the fast and slow. And then you have the signal line, which is the nine period, okay? Which is the EMA of the MACD line. Now this may sound quite confusing at the start, okay? Because like so many things are ongoing, how do I memorize them, okay? Uh, you don't need to really memorize it, but you just need to be familiar. You know, there are certain calculations ongoing on this indicator. And then as, as a trader, right, your role is basically look at the indicator, look at the charts, look at how it actually interacts, okay? So this is more like just giving you a base understanding, right? And then you also have what we call the histogram, okay? So the histogram is a study between the MACD line and the signal line. Okay, so if the MACD line and the, and the, and the signal line, okay, kind of, kind of opens up, okay, so they widen the weave, the histogram will be bigger, okay? If that two line, the MACD line and the signal line kind of converges, okay, then your histogram will be very, very small, right? In fact, it goes to zero when it crosses over, okay? So one indicator itself, you can see there's so many things ongoing. Okay, you have like the calculation of two MAs, and then you have the MACD line, you have this, you have the EMA of the of the MACD line, which we call signal line, and then you have the histogram. Okay, so how do you make sense of all this information? Okay, so over here, uh, I just put up a chart. Um, you can see, you know, the blue line, okay, is basically your MACD line, which basically calculates um, the two moving average differences. Okay, so MACD indicator, you realize that, hey, where is my moving average, okay? Um, they don't plot it into the chart, but of course, uh, if you like to, you can add on, later I'll show you as well, right? You add on to moving average um, to kind of visualize it, okay? So the MACD line is basically blue in color, and it kind of calculates the difference between the fast and the slow. The signal line is calculating the, the exponential average of the MACD line, which is the blue line, okay? So it tends to follow in a particular direction with the MACD line, right? So MACD goes up, usually EMA lines will go up, you know, and the signal line will go up. And then we have the histogram, okay? So green and red, okay? Green means that uh, the MACD line is above the signal line, okay? Red histogram means the MACD line is below it, okay? So over here, you can see when it, when it opens up, right? When the difference and the gap between the blue and the orange line is wider, your histogram is bigger, and when it crosses over, you realize your histogram is zero, okay? And then of course, when it crosses over, it starts to go lower, it becomes red, okay? So these are some of the aspect of MACD that you probably need to just be familiar with, okay? So with that, um, I'm gonna look into, I'm gonna share with you, right? And we're gonna look into how we can utilize these various pieces of information to help us in analyzing the market, okay? So how do we use MACD, okay? So there are different components within this particular indicator, okay? So the first thing here we're gonna look into is the MACD line, okay? So MACD line itself, to kind of recap, right, is a, is a study between the difference of a fast and a slow moving average, right? So moving average, again, is an indicator to help us identify the direction of a trend, right? So if MA is moving up, generally we're in an uptrend. If MA is coming down, we're in a downtrend. So this MACD line also uses the idea of identifying whether we are focusing on an uptrend or a downtrend, right? So when MACD actually crosses above zero, okay, which means the MAs are moving up, right? It means that we are generally in an uptrend, okay? Um, why is that the case? It's because MACD line is the calculation of the difference between fast and slow. So if the fast and slow is in a positive territory, means they are actually opening up, right? When they are opening up, means the trend is very clear, is going up, okay? And that's where MACD line will cross above zero. Now, if MACD line on the opposite crosses below zero, which goes into a negative territory, it means that the difference between your fast and slow MA is negative, right? And for it to be negative, it means that they're lowering, right? They're coming down. So that's where when the line crosses below zero, the trend is actually done, okay? So just by looking at MACD line itself, okay, in terms of the indicator is the blue line, it gives you a sense of direction, okay? So if I backtrack to the previous slide, 
Okay. You can see over here when the line, the blue line is going up, we're generating an uptrend when it's coming down. Okay. You can see the market is actually consolidating or is actually slowly coming down. Okay. So, and then of course, over here, as it goes up, you can see the blue line is again going back up. Okay. So that's what it means, right? So over here, um, I have more examples as well. You can see over here, the blue line actually crosses the middle point, which is zero. And when that happened, we're going up. Okay. Now, there is a drawback in using such an indicator, right? In fact, I would say most indicators have this common drawback, right? Drawback means not so good. Is that these indicators are often lagging in your analysis, okay? Now, a lot of times people will say, oh, indicators are lagging means they are not useful. Not entirely, right? You just need to know that lagging simply means that certain things may happen and then only the indicator will inform and show you the signal. However, okay, if today we have a very nice, strong trending market, okay, you don't need to catch the very bottom and buy it up all the way until the top, right? So if it's a very nice trending environment market, you can let it run a little bit first and then you get in maybe not at the very bottom, but you're still capturing a good portion of that move. Okay. So I want you to I want you to have that kind of like perspective where lagging doesn't mean bad. Okay. Lagging is just basically a, a nature of a characteristics of an indicator. But you as a trader, when you're looking at it, you need to understand, okay, this information that I'm getting from this particular indicator may be a little bit slower, okay? And you need to then make, you know, work around with it, okay? Um, so I just want to highlight on this because a lot of times people say, oh, lagging, then they just chuck it aside, right? But lagging doesn't mean it's useless. There is certain information that you can use out of it. Okay. So over here, of course, you can see, right, the market actually moved off already and then we only start to see crosses. Okay. But of course, you can see as this trend is going, right, maybe you may not catch that very first move, okay, but this here is starting to indicating that, oh, the direction is up, right, and you can see the blue line actually stays above zero, right. So in this entire environment here, we are in an uptrend. Okay. So of course, as you can see on this right side of the chart, okay, as it's coming down, it's doing a little bit of pullback. You realize the MACD line actually went all the way back to zero and then it hovers around the near zero territory. So it kind of tells you that, okay, be careful. Okay. Uh, we don't have a clear trend direction right now. And then at this point in time, you can see it breaks above it and the market continues in the, the particular direction. Okay. So the blue line itself can guide you a bit in terms of like which direction do you want to be focusing on taking trades okay now it doesn't mean that it crosses zero you buy in immediately right this is again telling you the direction to focus okay same thing over here when the macd blue line crosses below zero you want to focus on the sell direction okay it doesn't mean you you sell it immediately when it crosses zero but you have a clear sense of direction right and when this blue line crosses back above zero you don't want to be selling it anymore, right? In fact, you know, in this part here, you can see a lot of crosses back to zero, above zero, down to zero. The market is in a in the tight consolidation area. Okay. So that's what the MACD blue line can give us. Okay. So I hope that's clear. Okay. It gives you the sense of direction. Now, the next thing that we can incorporate in from MACD indicator is to add in the signal line, which is the orange line. Okay. So the orange line is a study of ENA of the blue line. Okay, so it starts to get a bit confusing. Uh, but basically the signal line, which is the orange one, it takes into account the average of the MACD, which is again, a little bit more lagging. Okay, because MACD line itself is a little bit lagging already. And then you take another formula to calculate the average of this MACD blue line. Okay. So yes, the entire setup may be a little bit lagging, but as I mentioned, you know, um, you need to have, you need to be clear when to use this and when not to, right? Of course, when the market is in a range bound environment, you get a lot of what we call false signal. You don't want to be using it just like that. But when we are in a very nice trend environment, then of course, this is very, very useful, right? Because MACD is helping you to identify that trend. Okay, so what we can do is we can use the orange and the blue line to help us identify certain setups, right? And this setup, so over here, we're looking at a crossover, okay? So example over here, you can see, you know, um, before, okay, so this becomes a little bit earlier, right? Before the MACD actually crosses below, we have a crossover, 
okay? And crossover basically means that two line intersects, okay? So blue and orange, you can see it intersects, right? And of course, it's tilting to the upside after it intersects. It means that buy opportunity is coming, okay? Um, and then, of course, over here, you know, I did not put it in the slides, but you can see here, right? It starts to cross over, it comes down, okay? Over here, it starts to cross over, it goes up, right? Over here, it cross over, it starts to range a little bit, it cross over again, it comes down, okay? Now, it may not be a perfect trade signal, okay? It doesn't mean that, well, every crossover you trade it, you're going to make money just like that, okay? Not necessary, but a crossover is telling you that a move is starting, okay? So there's a high probability that you may see a move in a particular direction as the crossover happens, but of course, it's not 100% of time, right? In some environment in the market, it becomes a little bit more difficult to trade, like case in point. Okay, this one crossover downside, you try to sell it. Maybe you didn't get at the very top, right? Because you wait for a crossover, you sell it maybe near the bottom. And then a crossover happened over here. Your sell may not work out, okay? Your buy at this point in time may not work out as well because after you cross a little bit, it comes back down, okay? It crosses another time. So this, this is where the environment is not suited for a trend kind of situation, right? And therefore, MACD signal may not be very accurate, right? So that's where... Uh, some traders would call this a false signal, okay? So every indicator would have false signal, okay? If you're trying to look for a perfect, 100% accurate thing, it doesn't exist, okay? So understand it's a high probability potential setup that is telling you get ready, okay? Um, but of course, you can't just blindly say, oh, every crossover will be buy or every crossover will be sell, okay? So I hope that's clear. Um, now, having touched on this, I also want to, you know, be be um, let you guys know at least be aware. Okay, um, if today you are fairly new and you are thinking or having the perspective thinking that oh, I just need to study one indicator and then I would have a complete, you know, kind of like trading strategy or trading plan. Um, that kind of thought process is not right as well. Okay, <laughs> I mean indicator the best it can do for you is to assist you in your process, okay? Um, if you just purely based on the very mechanical kind of like MACD crossover and then you trade it, um, it's not going to be very effective, okay? So what I mean by that is you probably need to have a little bit more experience, a little bit more of different understanding of the market to complement it, okay? So for example, you can use um, simple price action study like you know, uh, candlestick formation, you can use simple price action study like support and resistance to complement that, okay? So I hope that's clear, right? I need you to be able to understand that, right? Because I don't want you to come in today, um, hear about MACD and then just take an MACD like on the surface level and then develop a strategy just based on that and then go and trade it off, right? Uh, you may see some results from there, okay? But, um, my suggestion is always add on elements to it, right? Use it as an as a complementary tool. Okay, so over here again, um, just I mentioned that sell signal. Okay, so that's the the blue and the orange line, right? Just based on this two particular information, we are able to analyze the market and of course look for trading setups. Okay, now the other one that we can look into is the MACD histogram, right? The the basically the the blue and red. Okay. So what does this histogram mean, right? This histogram is actually a study of momentum, okay? So if we have an uptrend, we also want to know like, okay, is this uptrend very strong or is this uptrend starting to show some, some, some kind of weakness, okay? So of course, if the trend is very strong, then there's a good chance it will continue further, right? Which means if you have a buy trade and the trend to the upside is strong, you can consider to hold on to it. Um, and vice versa, right? If you start to... You have a buy trade and you start to see oh the strength of this uptrend is weakening you may want to consider maybe you know trail your stops take some profit or even exit the trade okay so over here the histogram that we're using um is to identify the strength the momentum okay if the histogram is huge the trend is strong if the histogram is short is small the trend is weak okay so over here you can see you know as this is going up okay slightly going up right um the histogram is basically hovering red, blue, uh, sorry, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, right? So it's, it's small, okay? You don't have a very clear sense of momentum, okay? So this is again telling you, okay, you know, may not be a very nice trend environment. You may want to consider staying out of it, 
okay? Um, and then this part here, you can see as it's coming down, you know, we get a very, very clear, nice rate histogram. And of course the histogram you can see is, is growing, right? Okay. So this tells you this entire piece of momentum is relatively strong. Okay. So this itself, again, doesn't mean rate you sell, green you buy, right? Of course you can see, oh, it does work out from time to time, you know, green you buy, rate you sell. Um, but, you know, if you're just blindly using it like that, it's not going to be sustainable, okay? So understand what it's telling you. Histogram is telling you the trend, strength, and momentum, okay? So the idea here is if histogram is very small, you may want to avoid trading and you can clearly see a strength in momentum, whether it's strong green, strong rate, that gives you a clear sense that let's focus on that move, okay? Now, if I put all this together, right, just purely based on MACD indicator, okay, we have the MACD line. So if the line crosses above zero, okay, that's telling you the trend is up. If it crosses below zero, that's telling you the trend is down, okay? And of course, we can use the crossover of the MACD line and the signal line, okay? That becomes your setup, okay? And then we have the other piece of information, which is the histogram, okay? So histogram over here, um, if it's turning from negative to positive, Okay, it's a buy opportunity. If it's from positive to negative, it's a sell, right? So basically from green to red, okay, that's a sell. From red to green, that's a buy, right? And if it from red to green and then the green keeps growing, a bigger histogram means, you know, we have a buy opportunity and the trend strength is strong, okay? Um, and then of course, over here, um, we can also then use this concept, okay, um, to proceed into what we call a divergence. Okay, so histogram over here is calculation of strength and momentum, right? And just now I briefly talked about at the very start, divergence basically is a study. Um, do we still have the, the momentum there or, you know, it's starting to show you a sign of reversal, okay? So that's where um, the divergence concept comes in, using the histogram on MACD, okay? Now, if today you are using another momentum indicator for, for example, RSI, stochastic, so uh, you can also use the histo uh, the divergence concept on those, right? Because at the end of the day, the principle is we are looking at momentum. The momentum is lag lagging, uh, lacking, right? So it's, it's lack of momentum and therefore a reversal, okay? So um, for example, okay, over here you can see the price is coming down, okay? So what does it mean? It means that usually if the trend is sustainable right the momentum and the strength is strong uh you should see the histogram telling you that right but in this case you realize that oh the peak of the histogram is actually smaller than the previous one okay which means the momentum of this down move is actually weaker than this down move okay you can follow that top process right so if there's a lack of momentum in this down move means that maybe the sellers are not that aggressive Maybe there's not so much of a sellers and there's a good chance that this may bounce. Okay, so of course, in this example, it bounced off very nicely, right? Um, if you have a top side, okay, um, sorry, this one I put in, you know, a, a small little strategy that you can use, okay? So this one is telling you at least don't sell, okay? Because there's a divergence, okay? It's telling you a potential reversal is happening. Now, of course, if you incorporate what we've covered just now, okay, you look at this part here, we have a histogram, uh, sorry, we have a signal line and the MACD line cross over, okay? Kind of indicating that, okay, let's look for a buy opportunity, okay? So you realize that this is crossing over before the move, okay? So it doesn't, again, mean that, oh, cross over, buy immediately, right? So just like I mentioned, you need to use this to complement whatever technique that you have. Okay, maybe you use some kind of, price action, you use some kind of candlestick formation, you use some kind of like a breakout technique, you know, et cetera, okay? So that's where you get this confluence, right? You have a you have a divergence telling you lack of momentum, a potential reversal. You get this crossover indicating that a setup is there, okay? And of course, you know, um, if you look into a buy here, we also want the histogram to start growing, right? Okay, so this is where, um, if you bought in at near the bottom, okay, then as long as the histogram is green, you keep on holding on to the buy. But as long as the histogram started to, you know, come down, crosses towards zero, okay, um, it's telling you, hey, be careful, right? So 
At this point in time, you can see over here, if I just go up a little bit, at this point in time, it's telling you be careful of the buy, okay? And after that, you get a little bit of push, but then after that, a bigger reversal, okay? So I want you to see, this is what the his, what, what the MACD histogram, the MACD blue line and the orange line can guide you, okay? Um, now, how you want to use this, all this to complement into your training strategy, um, is crucial okay uh, as i mentioned you don't want to just take it on surface level and use it okay um so this is where you know you can see of course you may not exit at the very very top i mean at this point in time you may look to get out right um, that's perfectly fine okay so over here um let me walk you through in some of the uh, charts environment okay um to show you how you can utilize this right so this is actually the vc plus uh, platform Okay, um, probably when you end, you, you, you log in, right, you end, end up on this page. Um, what you can do is you can click on markets, right? Um, if you're on FX, you can look at FX, cryptocurrency indices, et cetera. Okay. Um, now, maybe what I'll do is um, we'll look at some examples on FX market, and then we'll look at some examples on maybe the crypto or indices or methods, okay, for example. Okay, so um, like FX market over here, maybe one of the common ones is Euro dollar. Okay, so you open up this chart, um, you know, I would suggest you may not want to start with one minute, okay, um, I mean, unless you're doing scalping, okay, uh, most of the time I would personally be considering like a four hour chart, okay, I'll remove the volume indicator, um, where you can find MACD, you can find it under indicators tab over here, you type in MACD, you click on this, it will load up MACD, right, so you have your blue line, you have your orange line, you have your histogram, okay. So if you take a look at this particular um, instrument, euro, dollar, or follow time frame, you realize that number first, the first thing over here, okay, um, can I draw it? Yep. Okay, the first thing over here, what you realize is that um, we have this zero line, okay, somewhere here, right? Let me take on that um, red in color, right? So that's your zero line. And you realize that right now our MACD line is basically below it, right? So it's telling you the direction is what? It's basically bearish, okay? But we are slightly sloping to the upside, okay? So it's also telling you that um, you may not want to so aggressive be selling it here already because at one point in time, if this just keep falling and then this continue to rise, at one point in time, it will cross this D zero mark, okay? And that would, would, would be where the bullish opportunity will kick in. Okay. Now, another thing to note is, you know, if you just based on, as I mentioned, if you based on every crossover, you decide to trade it, right? So this one here is a buy crossover. You buy this, this trade doesn't work out, right? You buy here, this trade doesn't work out. Okay. So you, you need to filter. You can't say every crossover, I just buy or sell. Okay. Case important. Okay. So that's what you need to take. Now, now another thing is you start to realize that, hey, this histogram is actually getting smaller. Okay. And again, this tells you this move down maybe lacking in momentum, right? So again, this tells you, please be careful. Don't, don't be too aggressive selling anymore, okay? Now, another thing to note over here is we do have this move coming down, okay? But our, our sorry, our, our momentum histogram indicator, the histogram is actually going a little bit higher, right? You can see this, right? From this low, this low here is higher. This low here is even higher. But our prices are coming down, okay? This is what we call a divergence. Okay, so whenever you see a divergence, um, again, it's also indicating you be very careful with the sell. There's a good chance we may see a bounce, right? Of course, when are we going to get a bounce? This is where, you know, there's no perfection in it, but you need to have some some form of like strategy in place, right? And there's many ways to do it, okay? So if you're purely based on MACD, you know, if you want that kind of confirmation, the idea is wait until your MACD line crosses above the zero, then you would have some kind of a bullish confirmation, okay? Now, alternatively, if you're using maybe a breakout entry technique, okay, what you can look into, of course, you can use some of the recent tops over here. As it's going down, we have a divergence, okay? You want to wait for the price to maybe break off a significant high, okay, for you to get involved in the buy, right? And at that point in time, the divergence will still be there. And then maybe at this point in time, we may see some kind of a crossover of this high. Okay, so um, this is very quick, right? But I just want you to understand you need something 
to add on to just the indicator. You can't just say I trade based off MACD, right? You need to have um, some filtering system or criteria to help you get your trade executed. Okay, because MACD itself at the end of the day is, is an analysis indicator, right? It tells you um, what the trend is doing, where is the direction, okay? What's the probability of this direction going and what's the momentum of it, okay? So that's how you can utilize that. Okay, um, now uh, let me look into maybe metals, right? For example, gold, okay? So same thing over here, right? First thing off, you can see um, this MACD line is starting to cross over the, the zero mark, okay? Which kind of start to indicate, okay, early sign of a bullish trend may, may kickstart, okay? Um, another one here is, of course, the price is coming down. We have a very nice little divergence. Okay, in fact, this one here, you can see this peak and this peak quite obvious. This is coming down, right? So again, this is telling you that be very, very careful of the sell, right? Do start focus on the buy. And, and right now, we're getting the MECD line starting to cross above zero as well. Okay, so this one here, you know, if you look at it from gold perspective, maybe you want to look at a breakout point here. Okay, or some traders, you know, they will, they will say, let's wait for the break and then a retest and then we buy it up from the retest, right? So again, you're using the MACD to, to support the analysis, to help us in the analysis, okay? But how you get involved in the trade, there are many, many ways. And again, you want, you want to have your own personal style, right? Which one do you like it? Okay, some trade the breakout, some trade the break and a retest. Uh, you may add in a little bit of like, additional confluence, maybe candlestick formation, maybe Fibonacci retracement, etc. Okay. But you can see how MACD right now is giving you a signal, right? This is a divergence. This line here is there. Uh, of course, the buy signal here, we do have a little bit of a crossover. Okay. So we do have that happening as well. Okay. So of course, um, this is giving you, um, I think, near term potential, uh, potential opportunity that you can get involved in the buy. Now, Suppose you buy it up and then this, this one here continues to rise, right? Um, your histogram continues to be green and it's getting bigger. That's great, right? It means that you can continue to hold on to it. But at one point in time, if let's say your histogram, whoops. Okay, let me lock him again. Okay, let me go back to that. So just now we are talking about, you know, how if the, the hist after you enter, right, if let's say the histogram goes up initially, that's great, okay? But if at one point in time, you know, your histogram starts to turn from big green to start to come to zero, uh, at one point in time, you want to then be maybe careful, maybe take profits, you know, or, or throw your stops, etc. okay? Um, so that's something to know, right? So you can see the application, not only on FX market, but also in terms of gold. Okay, now if today you're trading indices, okay, let's say, um, maybe I need to target S&P over here, okay? So if you're trading S&P, right, um, kind of same thing, okay? This is on the forward chart. Um, first thing off, of course, we don't have the, we don't have divergence, it's not always the top is divergence, right? This is not a divergence, right? So what this means is, of course, this momentum push up is pretty strong. Okay, you may not want to sell, you may not want to expect a huge sell off, okay. Uh, but right now over here, we can see this is starting to cross over, okay. MACD histogram starts to go from very, very green to zero and then now starting to show signs of rate. So again, you may be in an uptrend, okay. Why? Because the MACD is basically still above zero. We're in an uptrend, but in the short term momentum, this may start to pull back a little bit, okay. So again, you may not want to sell because we are up. We don't have a divergence. You may not want to sell, but this tells you don't buy now first, right? So when we good buy opportunities, maybe if this continue to develop something like this, okay, this continue to come down, come down. And then at one point in time, if we cross over in a bullish environment, the trend is above zero. Your histogram starts to build up something like that. Okay, so it gets from red to maybe starting to get to zero. Um, then you may start to look out for maybe a breakout entry or a candlestick formation at the bottom as a rejection, you know, maybe a pin bar here, you can look to buy, okay? So again, I, I'm showing you examples that have yet to happen, but you can pre-plan for it, 
and you realize that we we actually need more than just MACD, but MACD serves as a kind of like complementary analysis tool, right? It can't give you a base to work on, but how you're going to execute, again, that's where you need to build on top of that. Okay. Now, of course, you can play with different time frame. I mean, this one here you can see on the far wall is pretty clear double top, right? But it's more of a smaller time frame double top structure. Okay. Now, of course, if you go down to a lower time frame, um, you do see a divergence. Okay. So you need to be very clear, like what time frame do you want to work on, what time frame do you want to trade, right? So this is going up, but you can see the histogram is basically nothing, right? The green here is very, very small. Okay, so there's definitely a divergence. And of course, on the H1, it kind of tells you a potential reversal, right? Of course, you may not catch the very top, okay? Um, you do have some signals over here. Okay, again, this signal here is a little bit earlier, but this signal here after divergence looks quite clean. Okay, you may not catch the very top, right? Again, as a trader, you don't need that, okay? But what you can do is, of course, you see a divergence with histogram, with price pattern. Um, you know, if you're familiar with double top, then you can look to enter at the break of the neckline. Okay, of course, you don't sell it now, right? Because um, this one here, usually we measure is from top to the neckline, and then we just expect a simple one is to one, right? In this case here, we're almost there, okay? Um, so again, you can play around with all these concepts that we covered today on multiple time frames or multiple asset, okay? I think if today you go over to like BTC, um yeah, this one uh you can also apply this in in terms of the the same thing right um so right now of course you can see this coming down so you know don't don't buy it but you realize that the macd line is actually above zero but technically still in an uptrend okay until maybe this crosses the zero then we're starting to shift to the downtrend right but right now we're uptrend but the momentum to the upside is not there because we're in the red Okay, so this may come down a little bit more. What it's telling you, just be careful, be, be, be patient, okay? Don't buy in now, uh, but the trend is up, okay? So the application is there. Now, if let's say, you know, you go to like 30 minutes, um, so not 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 the signal yet, right? Because anyway, this is already moving, okay? So on the 30 minute, uh, what you can complement, you know, just to share with you as well, you know, if you use a simple kind of, price structure level now suppose on the 30 minute this decides to come back up to retest that and then your histogram and your and your macd sorry starts to do something like that okay uh, so it comes back up retest it and then you have a crossover of your macd line and the signal line okay at this area you realize that hey we have a signal right which we cover uh, macd crosses the signal that's the sell signal and then you complement it with, oh, we have some, some previous support now turn resistance. That's a good opportunity to sell. Okay. So uh, I'm showing you an example where you want to add on layers of analysis, right? Don't just base on MACD itself. Okay. So um, I hope that's clear. Okay. Yeah? Um, good. So I'm seeing some questions, but before we answer those, um, I'll come back to my PPT over here and just, you know, um, kind of refresh your memory that there's this virtual trading contest. Um, now if you are on the platform on the left, right, you can see there's this contest virtual trading contest. If you click it, okay, you can also find more information over here. Okay. Um, so the duration is from starting June, which is tomorrow. Okay. Uh, for one month, right, all the way until end of June, okay, and uh, of course it's a virtual, which means it's a demo account. You don't you don't risk your own, you don't risk your own money, right? You basically use virtual money to trade, okay. So basically the steps are here, right? You log in, get your account verified, open the new trading contest account, wait until tomorrow, then it starts, and then you can start trading, okay. And then from there, um, the leaderboard will start to be updating itself, okay? Yeah. So of course, um, there are some TNCs. Uh, I will not read off everything over here, okay? But uh, these are the TNCs that you need to take note of, okay? If you're really interested, I would suggest just snap a photo. You can go and read on later, okay? Um, yeah, so basically, this is the one, okay? So I'll give you like a couple of seconds to take photo. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's the one, and that's about it, right? So um yeah, I'm seeing some questions. Maybe um I'll pass back 
to our moderator today and uh, maybe from there we'll answer the questions accordingly. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Kanyo, for sharing. I'll just quickly share my screen as well. Ah, yeah. So remember, you can you can log into your NQID to send us your information or send us any inquiries before we start our Q and A. We will start our Q and A session very very soon. Okay. Yeah. And here's a reminder that VC Plus is also running, other than the contest, VC Plus is also running the Welcome Credit Campaign where you can get 100 USD credit when you deposit above 500 USD in your newly opened trading account with VC Plus. The campaign is ending by 30th, 30th of June. So if you're interested, do remember to scan a QR code here and open your free account with them. And once again, here's uh, marketing about the trading contest. It will be starting on the 1st of June tomorrow until 30th of June, one month, and the price includes 250 USD up to 1000 USD. I believe Kayo has explained in details about it. So if you're interested, remember to scan the QR code here and open your trading account with them to prepare for the trading competition. And so for all MQ members, you can get your check-in rewards by taking a screenshot of any part of this webinar, submit the screenshot into the post webinar quiz that will be sent to you later. And that's all, you can get your quick check-in rewards, okay? We will be starting at the mysterious gift session right after the Q&A. So do stay tuned for it to grab your chance to win our gifts up to 249 ringgit. Now let's start our Q&A. Uh, we will not be, I see a lot of questions in the chat box, but we will most probably won't be able to finish all the questions by today. So we'll pick um, a few to, for Kayong to answer today. Lah. So Kayong, uh, the first question is from Easy Trade. She, he is asking like, how do you identify and confirm a valid MACD divergence? Maybe uh, to distinguish it from noise or false signals. Uh, okay, so for for me, okay, um, let me take it back. Okay, uh, I'll share my charts. Yep, okay. Um, so I'll, I'll use examples here um, to kind of help you understand that. So um, this is a chart on um, GBP USD. Uh, sorry, GBP JPY. So you can see this is going up, right? And what we have over here is, of course, the momentum is showing a divergence, right? High kind of like green histogram is here, and then this peak is here is coming down. This is going up. Okay. So this is indicating, of course, a potential reversal. Okay. Um, but again, you know, we we in the market we know that it's not going to be hundred percent every time we're going to get a reversal. So in terms of confirmation, um, I would say there are two ways you can look for it. Of course, one, you can look for price action and things like that. You can insert maybe additional indicators to help you to give more confirmation to it. Um, the other technique is you utilize your entry strategies to give you some kind of confirmation, right? So for example, you know, if today you look at this, uh, we have some minor low over here, so we can deploy what we call a breakout technique to enter, right? So a breakout meaning you don't enter until the price breaks it, then you sell it, okay? So you can use an entry methodology to help you quote unquote confirm the reversal, okay? So of course, if price decides to break through this level here, then you know it's telling you, yes, maybe the reversal is starting and we can expect a little bit more downside, okay? So that's how I use to give me quote unquote the confirmation. Again, doesn't mean that if it breaks, it's definitely gonna go down, right? It's just increasing that, uh, I would say that confirmation that we have a signal, we have a sign that yes, the market is going, okay? Um, so that's how I use it. Um, and this is one example, okay? Um, I mean, couple if you're in, in the FX market, there are a couple of yen pairs that are showing that. Um, for example, like dollar yen over here on the, on the lowest time frame. Okay, um, we do have this double top structure. And of course, you can see the divergence is quite obvious, right? I mean, there's, there's almost nothing there, okay? Uh, but this one went up a little bit. 
Okay, and of course the confirmation is a breakout of the neckline, right? So when the market, sorry, this neckline is here. So when the market actually hit this double top, we have this neckline and it brooks and it breaks below that, you know, this becomes the idea where okay, this may start to to go lower. Okay. So I, I hope that kind of give you an idea um on how you can add layers of confirmation um for divergence. Mm. So basically yeah. it's to use a few more uh, strategies to confirm it. Yeah, so you, you need something beyond just MACD itself, right? I mean, um, as a strategy, you can't just use one indicator and then expect a um, kind of like um, a complete strategy in, in executing in, in the market. So the indicators serve its purpose to give you a quick overview. Um, for example, MACD give you a quick overview of the trend direction that you want to focus. It gives you a quick overview of momentum. And of course, we then use momentum to understand divergence. Mm. Yeah. So I think there's another question is very similar to what we have been discussing now is, um, do we recommend any other indicators to use in conjunction with the MACD? Um, I, I would say you, you can, um, but my style, my, 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 my approach to it is always, um, I don't rely a lot indicator, right? Um, for me, MACD and RSI is quite similar. So I actually use RSI more frequently than MACD. But of course, RSI doesn't tell you the direction, right? MACD gives you the extra layer of information of the trend. Um, so I would say um, you probably wouldn't want to add on too many indicators on your chart, but you definitely need to have some kind of understanding of maybe price, right? So um, you're using MACD to give you some information, and then you need to understand maybe basic levels of support resistance, maybe chart patterns, like we talk about double top on this example, you know, um, certain things like that would definitely add value and, and help you in your analysis. And I think that's important. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the next question is, since we are talking about um, MECD is slightly lagging kind of indicator, how do we counter the drawbacks? Um, yeah. So this is where um just like i briefly mentioned right yes it's lagging um but it doesn't mean it's bad in a way okay so so for example if case in point right i mean this may or may not happen because we're talking about potentially future move okay but let's say right now you can see um let me change this okay right now we we can see that let's say this chart here you know it's, it's starting to show signs coming down okay we have this crossover here Okay. We may not need to catch the very, very top to profit from a down move, right? Because if this is in fact reversing and starting to, to build up into a nice little downtrend, we can always trade the second retracement, right? So this is like maybe first move, it pulls back, we can trade from here on, okay? So what I mean by lagging is this may start to form before you can see the MACD line starts to go below zero, right? So at this point in time, it's actually still hovering above zero, okay? Which means you may not catch this move if you are following, you know, very, very strictly on it because the trend is not bearish yet. Okay. So it's, it's lagging in a way because price would have moved down before you get this. Okay. So by the time the MACD line tells you we're in a bearish trend, price has moved down. Okay. So that's what I mean by lagging. Okay. But of course it doesn't mean it's bad, right? Because if this comes down, this confirms a bearish trend, you can trade and wait for a pullback and you trade it from here down, right? And of course, you also need to, to kind of look into is the condition still fulfilling a sell opportunity? Is the trend still there? Yeah. So how we counter lagging is, um, again, we are not looking to solve that issue of lagging by finding ways to trade this, okay? Because that's how indicator works. It needs price to form before the formula can calculate it and tell you it's down, okay? So we don't try to solve the lagging issue by this, but we understand that there's some lag time and we wait for the next opportunity to get involved in it, right? So that's my perspective of how we solve, um, quote unquote, solve, right? We don't really solve it, but how we kind of like take in, accept the fact that it's lagging and then still make the best use of it. Mm. So basically wait for more opportunities or a confirmed sign to, to, to enter. Yeah. So the next question is from Kilogram. 
he is asking, are there any specific risk management techniques or guidelines that should be followed when trading based on the MACD divergence? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, risk management um, guidelines at the end of the day doesn't really tie to a specific indicator, okay? Um, but it's more of... Um, just slowly. It's more of how you're looking at it, right? So for example, um, if my entry point is a breakout, then of course I need to be clear where is my invalidation, right? If I'm wrong, where would I want to get out? So like for a simple example, if I'm going to get in at this low, okay, I want to get out at that high if the markets break it, then it doesn't really come to, I mean, MACD just tells me the divergence, right? It tells me, okay, I will probably want to look for sell. So if my entry is here, my, my stop is here, then of course my risk management will be based on this. Um, it has nothing to do with the MACD anymore, right? Um, so that's that's something to, to note, right? And of course, if we're talking about divergence in this example, let's say I pick another example and say, okay, if this is a um, bullish trade call, right? So we have the orange and the blue line crossing over. Um, and over here, you know, based on certain pattern, you recognize, say, okay, this is a bullish move. Okay, we have this signal call. Maybe I'll not catch that, right? Because by the time this happened, it's here. Then what we have is this little consolidation, okay? And we have this little high here. And then we have maybe an invalidation point that we established here, right? So then again, um, even if it's not a divergence, you realize that you need to have clear entry points and stop loss that before you execute a trade. And then you calculate the width of this and you know how you should calculate your position sizing according to your risk tolerance, etc. Um, and that's how we incorporate risk management, right? Again, the, the initial work is done by the indicator to help you in your analysis. But when you reach the point where you're going to execute a trade, uh, it boils back down to where are you entering, where are you exiting if you're wrong, and then you calculate your risk based on that. Mm, okay. So basically always enter with a stop loss point in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's all for our Q&A session due to time constraint. Yeah, so thank you once again, Kayong, for the sharing and also answering most of the questions in our webinar today. And I would say a big thank you to all our audience who participated, especially uh, asking your questions in the webinar itself. So we will be starting our mysterious gift session as promised. And in this, uh, in case anyone is not familiar with um, how, how the drill goes by. Basically, we will be showing questions and answers on the screen, answers options. So we will be giving out gifts to the first two person who answer the questions correctly. There will be three questions in total. So you have six chances to win your gift in this mysterious gift session. So get ready with your MQID. Make sure you, can, you have logged in and also you can use the chat box to send your answer. Okay, uh, and just a disclaimer, uh, in sometimes it will be showing on your chat box that you may be the first one or etc. But uh, due, it may be due to some internet connection speed and all that. So we will be basing the speed and also the sequence based on our own uh, main computer. Okay, so ready? We will start our mysterious gift session now. Right, so the first question, what is the full name of MACD? A, B, C, or D? Is it McDonald? Moving average, convergence, divergence, or any other thing? So just type out A, B, C, D in your chat box and let us know your answer. The first two quickest one with the correct answer will get the prize. Okay, so the answer is B, moving average, convergence, and divergence. I mean, there's no N. Moving average, convergence, divergence, MACD. So let us see who will get the gift for this question. Congratulations to Wei Xian Chu and Cha Yuan Wang. Remember to use the, the Google form on the screen or even the chat box itself to send us your contact details so that we can arrange the gifts for you. Okay, so next, coming up the second question. What is MACD often used for? Is it to identify direction of trend, 
uh, is it to identify selling point or take profit point or a point to draw Fibonacci? Which one? I think Kayong mentioned a lot of times in her, his sharing, even in the Q&A session. So I believe most of you will be getting it right. So A, B, C, D. Okay, I see a lot of questions, answers coming up already. Most of you has got it right, which is A, to identify direction of trend. Momentum on where the price is going and also the trend, basically. So the congratulations, our winner for this question is Yok Lung and Geek13. Remember to send us your contact details using the Google form so that we can, we can arrange the gifts for you. Okay, so the last questions, do take note, ready. Okay, according to Ka Yong, normally how many settings are there in, for MACD? Or I would say components. This is slightly confusing, but I believe um, most of you can get it right as well. One, two, three or four, which three settings that he mentioned today. Slightly slower in response now. Okay. Okay, I see a lot of people answering already. So the answer is C. Three components is the signal line, the MACD line, and the histogram. Okay, these are the three things or three settings for MACD that you can, you can use in combination within this strategy. So the winner would be Dark Crow and HF Log 07. So use the Google use the Google form to send us your contact details, and we will give you a bit of time to do so. Because when the webinar ends, uh, it means also that we will end accepting all the information as well. So remember to send us your contact details. All the winners send us your contact details using the Google forms, uh, and we will arrange the gifts accordingly. So while we, while we are waiting for them to send us the gifts, I just want to mention about our MQ referral campaign, which is ending in the 30th of June. All MQ affiliates will be able to get a bonus 1,000 MQ coins for each successful reference. For MQ, MQ affiliate, you can get recurring rewards itself. Okay, so this bonus 1,000 MQ coins is on top of your recurring rewards. If you're interested, remember to join our affiliate now. And for our current affiliate, remember to start referring before, before the campaign ends. And a gentle reminder, Visit Plus is having this virtual trading contest. If you're interested, do open a trading account now. Your account has to be verified before you can actually join the contest. Okay, so you need to open an account and then verify it by submitting your, your details and also your documents into the Visit Plus account. Okay, so you need to complete all the verification process so that you can join this trading contest. Remember to do so now. You can scan the QR code on the screen to join them and to get ready for the contest tomorrow. MQ Trader will be organizing webinars at least once every month. And now it's like every consecutive week. So we will also be organizing a lot of campaigns where you can see from time to time. So remember to like and follow us on our social media, on Facebook, Instagram, or even i3 Investor and MQ Chat as well. So you can use the QR code here to follow us and like us so that you can get our latest updates and even latest information or latest sharing as well. Once again, a big thank you for everyone who have participated in this webinar today. And thank you for staying true. And also, I hope you learned something today. I will be turning off my camera now and the webinar will be live for a few more minutes especially for those who wants to refer to the links that we have shared today and also for our winners to use the google form to send us your contact so once again thank you for making this webinar a successful one i'm casey from mq trader and i wish you a great week ahead thank you bye bye dark crow uh yes attendance got points what you need to do is to send us your con to send us your screenshot of the webinar at any point of the webinar. You can take the screenshot now and then submit it in the post-webinar quiz. 
So if you have not, let me just show you the screen as well. If you have not registered for this webinar, you can do so now so that you can get our post webinar quiz. Let me just show you the slide where you can register. So in case you haven't registered, you can do so now, dark chrome, so that you can get our post webinar quiz and also answer it in your, submit your, submit your screenshot in the quiz. Okay, so this is where you can register for the webinar and get our post webinar updates. Remember to submit your screenshot of this webinar, not any other webinar, but this webinar. So you can claim your chain rewards. So the rewards will be at 300 MQ points. Remember to do so now. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you once again. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer, especially towards MQ Trader. If not, I'll just, uh, I will off my camera now. Thank you and bye-bye. Thanks for watching.